Hello and welcome to the Girl Fit Method podcast. So today we have the whole team with us, Coach Julie, Coach Vanessa, Coach Kat. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. <laughs> we are doing a Q&A. So a few weeks ago, I did a Q&A podcast and I actually got a lot of positive feedback about that. I got lots of DMs saying, I love the, uh, the Q&A format. You should do more. So I thought, well, I may as well do it with three of the most incredible women. And I've got you all here. So we've got some really great questions. I popped a question box up on my Instagram stories. Once again, we're not going to answer a listener question today because we are literally answering potentially your question anyway. So should we get stuck into it? Actually, first, let's do a quick round of how we're all going. Kat, how are you? I'm doing super good. Doing great in California and it's hot. (laughs) How hot? Is it humid? It's not humid. Um, it's like in the nineties. So I guess it's really not that bad, but I have no idea what that means. I don't know. It's like 27, 28. Oh, that's perfect weather. But it gets really, it gets really hot in California, doesn't it? It gets warm and most apartments don't have AC. Why? I don't know. I think it's like they, like the, um, The ocean breeze maybe is kind of what we're trying to hit on, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah, no, you need, you need some serious air conditioning breeze. (laughs) That's horrible to say. It's so hard to sleep when it's hot. It's the worst nighttime. Oh, for sure. Vanessa, how are you? I'm good. Same thing with Kat, really. Like it's so hot in Connecticut and unfortunately it is humid here. So you like go outside and it's just like this wave of heat and it's just like sticky heat. It's actually pretty disgusting. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's hot on top of that. So, um, you know, I feel like though you can't win because it's either cold here or like super hot. And like, there's like probably two months of the year where it's actually like comfortable. So (laughs) I was going to say either like in my summer when it's your winter, you are absolutely freezing and hating life, but I know the humidity. I went to New York like years ago and I remember just being like, my goodness the humidity was disgusting and you just walk out and you're literally dripping with sweat like it's gross it's so uncomfortable so I um, I empathize with you it sucks thank you I appreciate it here I really do it's like I always complain about the weather on the podcast but like (laughs) we're all about complaining here it's our favorite thing to do so don't worry (laughs) you're in good company (laughs) Julie how are you I'm good as well. I will say too, the weather here is horrible. Um, <laughs> Why is your weather bad? We only have one state and it's hot. That's oh. us year round in Florida. So we don't even get a break from it. Oh. <laughs> she wins. She wins. Is it humid or dry heat there? It's humid. This has turned into a weather discussion. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's going to ask me about what the weather's been like here in Adelaide, Australia. Can somebody ask? How is your weather? I thought you would never ask, ladies. Well, in fact, it's winter over here and it's been cold and I hate the cold. So it does make me a little bit grumpy, but I can't really complain because it's not like snowed in cold. It's just like, I just, you know, you know what it's like when it's gray outside, there's no sunshine and it just affects your mood. That's what it's like. But I can't really complain. I'm not humid. I do have air conditioning and heating. So do you know what? I don't have too much to complain about. (laughs) <laughs> you're winning <laughs> all right that is enough weather talk for probably six months so we won't be talking about that <laughs> for a while let's get stuck into these questions all right so the first one I'm going to start off with is like a very common question we get asked a lot and I understand because I had this question at the beginning of my health and fitness journey and that is how do I eat more protein All right. I'm going to hand this over first to coach Julie. Hit us. What's your top tips to get more protein into your diet? I would say planning ahead. Honestly. Um, I always tell clients to almost like pre-track the day and make sure they're hitting like the protein first. And I always tell them to, to kind of like center the meal around protein and then build like the carbs and fats afterwards, just so we are getting inadequate protein. And then just increasing, you know, portion sizing throughout the day. If, you know, they're eating three ounces, eat four ounces. And then if they need to supplement with a protein shake, I'm like, you can drink one a day. It should be fine. And that can easily add another like 25 to 30 grams. And it's just kind of strategically planning it out. (laughs) Yeah, it's planning ahead, isn't it? And just on the protein part of advice that you gave, it's actually okay as well to have two scoops a day. 
I get this question a lot too. It's like, how much is too much? Is it bad for me? Some days I have three scoops of protein powder. The only issue with that is it's expensive. So it, you, you know, if you can not use as many scoops in a day, but really it's actually just the protein out of a food source, right? So it's not bad for you. It's not like it's quote unquote processed foods. It's actually just the macronutrients sort of like secreted out of a food. So nothing wrong with that. And it can be very handy. I love all of those tips. Um, Coach Kat, Coach Vanessa, anything else to add to that? Um, one other thing I would say is just like trying to eat a little bit more frequently since protein is so highly satiating. I find that if you eat like large portion sizes of it, sometimes it just like gets exhausting and you get really full. So if you eat three times a day, maybe trying to bump it to four or five, like with a protein supplement or even just eating whole protein sources, um, that can be helpful as well. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that is, you know, if you're a person whose life is more on the go, having high protein snacks, just like that you have on hand. So like having things like a yogurt cup, um, you know, protein bar, you know, those sit well with your digestive system, you know, different things like that. You can just, you know, that if you need a snack, you have a high protein one that you can just grab and it's not going to be, you know, something that you have to like cook or create at any point. Yeah. I love all those tips. I think it's intentionality with protein. It's really easy for us just to go, okay, what are we having for dinner? We're having a curry or we're having pasta, but we're not really thinking about the protein source. And like you said, Julie, if you start with the protein source in mind, okay, I'm going to have, for example, some steak or some um, turkey, then you build your meal around that. If you want to have pasta, you're going to add that to the pasta. So you've kind of got that ticked off, but it does take some intentionality. It's not as easy to get your protein in as it is carbohydrates, carbs. You can just grab an apple, a banana, protein. You can't just be, you know, you know, chewing on like a raw chicken breast. It's not going to go down well for you. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to have to plan ahead. Uh, but once you get into the hang of it, it's like any new habit it becomes really, really easy and like second nature. All right. Next question. Tips on getting my period back. This is a really big topic. I'll hand it over to, so we've actually all experienced hypothalamic amenorrhea, I believe. Yeah, we all have, haven't we? So maybe let's just talk about our own experiences and what helped us get our cycle back. I can kickstart things off and then I'll hand over to you guys. So um, ultimately for me, it was definitely a combination of too much exercise and then not enough food in general. What has been really interesting. So, so for me, initially to get my cycle back, I had to scale back exercise and I had to cut out all cardio. I couldn't do any cardio. I had to just lift weights and I was able to lift weights and I needed to really increase my calories. So I started eating over 2000 and it took some time. It took a good nine to 10 months before I got my cycle back actively trying to get my cycle back it was gone for like years prior to that and then nine months of eating that amount <clears throat> excuse me and then training like just lifting weights not doing cardio and it was really hard because that's a really long time but that's how long it took me I have lost it so I lost it again after not for a long period of time but I realized that um, my fat intake was dropping and I started to bump up my fats and I literally got my cycle back the next month. So that was really interesting too. So it can also be what you're eating. Um, Coach Kat, I'll hand over to you and sort of what worked for you. Yeah, no, that's, mine is very similar. I didn't have my period for like, honestly, I didn't have a natural cycle. I was on birth control for a while as well, but because of hypothalamic amenorrhea, I was on birth control for like eight years. Um, and really what helped me get my cycle back was very similar, was cutting down on the cardio and really focusing on fats, but also stress, um, really working on managing stress. Um, I have a tendency to be pretty high strung and being able to get like kind of stressed out and like my mind in a bit of a wrap a little bit. So even just implementing different, you know, techniques of daily, just kind of reducing stress, you know, going on walks, journaling, things like that. Um, they honestly, they sound so minute, but it really can make such a difference just managing stress. And I think that that had a huge role in me getting my cycle back. 
Yeah, that mindset piece, it's huge. We overlook it. Sometimes we just want to look at the physical things, like what can we physically do? How much can we eat? How much less we can train? But we forget about how much our mindset plays a really important role in all of that. Um, Coach Vanessa. Yeah, very similar to both of you. Actually, Tosh, like exactly the same as you almost with in terms of years. And it took me about nine months to get my cycle back after eating a lot more than I was comfortable with. If I'm being honest, cutting back on all my cardio, only doing steps. I was able to weight train, which I'm really happy that I was able to because I love it. Um, And then honestly, going along with what Kat had said, like taking the pressure off myself in terms of looking a certain way and being shredded. And that was something that was on like the mental side of things that I really had to work through. And I was talking to a client about that today where like the stress can really impact your cycle coming through. And I was telling her like when I had really just like let go of being the smallest version of myself, my cycle came actually really shortly after that. Um, and I think a lot of that was the stress, com- like the stress component of when is my cycle coming? When is my cycle coming? So very similar to you guys. Very good point. It's almost when you hyper fix on it, that can also be counterproductive. I actually just want to also make note before we um, hand over to you, Julie, is that I also had to gain weight. That's something that we didn't sort of touch on. I had to gain weight heavier than what I am now, which is really interesting. I had to probably gain an extra five kilos than what I am now. And I have a healthy cycle now. So what I have seen is that sometimes in order for the body to kind of feel safe for you to get your cycle back, you do need to kind of just put on additional body fat until it kind of goes, oh, okay, you know, we're in a place now where we're getting enough food in, we're not expending all of this energy, we're all good to be getting a regular cycle. And then your body kind of, I didn't intentionally lose weight, it just kind of happened. Um, So that can be very difficult um, part of the process, but sometimes it's absolutely necessary. Coach Julie, did you have to gain weight to get your cycle back? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I would say I was very similar to both you two as well, where I had to really reduce the amount of cardio I was doing. I was luckily able to strength train as well and just like really work on increasing my calories and also focusing on the fats because when I was restricting, my fats were extremely low. And so it took me about a year to get it back as well. Um, And I will say at first I was like, okay, how much weight do I need to gain in order to, you know, get my period back? Cause I was like, I'll stop as soon as I hit that weight. And it took a lot longer than you think it does. Cause I also gained like 15 to 20 pounds before I actually got it back. And I will say too, you kind of almost get symptoms of like these phantom periods prior to getting it back. So you kind of know it's coming and you're like, okay, I'm heading in the right direction. Especially if you're like not getting blood work done or anything like that to kind of see where you're at initially, but that's kind of what I had to go through. (laughs) So many, yes. Sorry, Kat. Sorry to interrupt you. I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It is such a good point because we get this all the time. Girls are like, oh, I'm having like my boobs hurt. Like I'm feeling crampy. I'm feeling bloated. I'm feeling constipated. What's, what the heck is going on? And I think the hardest bit about all of this is the mindset, because as you will know, leading up to your cycle, you can become a little bit crazy. And in particular, you can have really bad body image because everything seems like the worst, right? You hate your life. You suck. You're ugly. You're fat. And I'm sorry to use all of those words, but let's be honest. We've all felt that, right? So what's happening is, is you have no idea that your hormones are just like actually starting to kind of kick in. Maybe you're so close to your period and all you're thinking is, is this isn't working. I'm gaining too much weight. This is so uncomfortable. I don't want to do this anymore. And in fact, you're actually so, 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 so close to achieving that goal of getting your cycle back. So hang in there. It's really very difficult. It's a really difficult journey to be on. It really challenges you in so many different ways, but it's so worth it. And it's really, really needed. Oh, great. Yeah, points. And I think something I want to touch on too, Julie, you mentioned like, as soon as you hit that weight where you get your cycle that you're going to stop. And in my own journey, like I had to go past that weight in order to get conti- like continue getting regular cycles. And sometimes you have to get a little bit more uncomfortable and more like on the side. I gained almost 30 pounds trying to get my cycle back. And it was something that, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but I think it's really important that sometimes in order to produce a healthy cycle, because you do need to have multiple, like multiple cycles in a row to no longer have HA. So just being okay that if you have to go over that weight that you set for yourself, that it's okay. So I want to touch on that too, but really, really good point about the go cycles as well. Yeah, it is. It's nothing really challenges your sense of identity and worth. 
and having to detach your body to your value than having to intentionally gain weight. It's really difficult, but it's worth it. And I think through that process, I'd say all of you, you'd agree with me in saying that it was so beneficial because it really taught you, it taught you that the world doesn't fall apart, number one, if you do gain weight. And also you can do hard things. (laughs) You need to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable if there are goals that you're wanting to achieve in your life. And ultimately, who cares if you've gained some weight? You're still, you're still you, right? And I know that's really like a throwaway comment, but it is something that is really important and a lesson that like everyone needs to learn, but it's not always easy. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think honestly, most of my self-confidence now is from gaining that weight and being yeah. okay with it. So. Love it. So good. Love it. Love it. All right. Next question. There are so many really great questions here. So difficult to choose which one to go next. All right, we're going to answer this question. This is actually from a client of ours. And she has asked, how long do you need to stay in maintenance calories for? So let's um, paint a little bit of a picture. If someone has been dieting, they've been on a diet and a calorie deficit, or if they've been under eating and they're doing the whole reverse diet thing to be able to actually lose weight down the track, how long should they be staying at maintenance calories for? I'll go first. I would say, honestly, as long as possible, minimum, as long as you were in a deficit, obviously, if you were in a deficit for like years, you're not going to like have to spend ma- like maintenance at calories at maintenance for years. But I would say like minimum six months. But again, everyone's situation is super different. I would say a good rule of thumb is at least six months. Um, if they have been experiencing that yo-yo dieting, chronic dieting, restrictive dieting, all those things, I would say honestly, as long as possible, but minimum six months. Totally agree. It's so hard. I spoke about this on my stories on Instagram yesterday. It's so true that when you're in this mindset of always trying to lose weight and trying to chase a new diet, that's going to be the thing that makes you happy and finally achieve your goal. Then sitting in a place where you're just eating maintenance calories and you see no changes in your body is so hard. And this is once again, coming down to reframing the way that you're thinking about things. Maintenance is so important. That's actually where the magic happens. Maintenance and in a slight surplus. And let's also talk about, hey, we might not be losing weight at maintenance calories, but how good do we feel? Like how strong do we get? We can concentrate. Our cognitive ability is just so much better than when we're constantly trying to eat less and less. We enjoy life more. We have more flexibility. Like there are so many wins. Actually, so many positives that outweigh the negatives, especially in comparison to when you're in a calorie deficit. But it can be really challenging, especially if you're not happy with the way that your body looks, but it's all a part of the process. It's a very important part of the process. Now, I'm also going to, this is kind of a similar question, and I really want to answer this one because this is really important. Is weight gain common during a reverse diet? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we all smile. <laughs> all right. I think just like the cycle, the getting our period back, I think we should all talk about our own journeys through a reverse diet and we're increasing our maintenance calories because I think there's a lot of value to learn in that. So first of all, I want to let you know that there is a massive difference between weight gain and fat gain. You will always gain weight when you eat more. You will always gain weight. It's going to be impossible for the scale to drop when you start to eat more. And that's purely the fact that you have more food in your stomach. Weight means jackal. We need to look at whether you're gaining fat. Now, fat is when you think about gaining weight. That's kind of what you're thinking about. So if you are so obsessed with the scale and what the scale says and you see it going up and that's going to affect you through your reverse dieting, then number one, You shouldn't be weighing yourself. Please stop weighing yourself. Or number two, you're not in the mindset to understand this is all a part of the process. So it is always going to jump up. It's always going to jump up. So just go into it knowing that, right? Like be completely prepared that it's going to jump up. Now, fat gain. Absolutely, fat gain can happen through a reverse diet. So we have, I guess, like three outcomes. We have the people that gain fat. We have the people that stay the same. And then we have the people that lose fat. Now, the people that lose fat are the unicorns of the world. Not everyone loses fat. In fact, they're the smallest percentage. And really what's happening there is when people are in that situation, usually two 
it's either one of two things is happening. So first of all, they were underestimating how much they were eating. So they thought that they were eating X amount of calories, when in fact they weren't. And now that we've just changed the macronutrient split, they're actually eating in a deficit. That's the first reason. Number two is that they haven't dieted for a long period of time. They've actually eaten a good amount of food. And so when we start to feed their body more, we, they start to eat more calories. Their body wants to utilize that energy, meaning they're going to start expending more energy right? As they're eating more, which then puts them in a deficit. Now, once again, these are the unicorns of the world. The majority of people are going to stay at the same weight or they are, excuse me, body fat percentage, I should say, or they're going to gain a small amount. Now, when we talk about uh, fat gain through, through a reverse diet, there is no need for you to put on 10 kilos. That's not going to happen. But what may happen is you do put on a couple of kilos. But what I want you to think about is how you're setting yourself up for long-term success. And it can be difficult. However, what's happening is, is if you continue doing what you're doing right now, you're not getting results anyway, right? You probably can't stick to that amount of food that you're consuming. You start to eat more, you're going to gain weight anyway. So like, what's the point? Let's do it the right way. Let's get you set up. Now for me, absolutely. I gain weight. I gain weight. I did my reverse diet when I was trying to get my cycle back. So that was all a part of that process. I gained about five kilos. Uncomfortable? Absolutely. But I had to change my goal. I had to change the way that I think about things. I just focused on performance. I actually had to really work through my issues with my body. That's hard to sit with that and actually detach my value from what I thought I should look like. And that was a really, really empowering process for me. So yes, I had to gain fat in my situation. Uh, Kat, what happened with you? Yeah. So I definitely gained like almost 20 pounds during my reverse diet. However, I will say, I think I really only bumped up one like full clothing size. So it's like, I gained, I think quite a bit of muscle. I didn't gain a whole lot of fat, you know, maybe, you know, maybe like, you know, two to three pounds of fat, but like my body, you know, stayed relatively the same size. Although 20 pounds seems like a ton. If it takes you, you know, 20 pounds over what you're used to weighing, you weigh yourself on the scale and you can absolutely freak out. It feels so uncomfortable. You feel so weird in your body. Um, and the thing is, is I, like exactly what you said, like sometimes that's just what's required. And it is so, you know, it's just so normal to gain weight, but is that weight always fat? Not really. It doesn't have to be. Now, sometimes like when you're, like you said, like when you're trying to recover your cycle, fat gain is going to be, you know, something that needs to happen or, you know, depending on just how your body responds in general, depending on how you've been treating it, it might just need that extra fat for a while before you can really go into a fat loss phase and have a successful fat loss phase. But for myself, I would say, yes, that I gained a little bit of fat. I definitely gained a good amount of weight, but in that with a good hypertrophy training, definitely gained a bit of muscle as well. And can I just quickly touch on a point there is you gained 20 pounds, but I'm pretty certain that the weight that you were at was unhealthy. Oh, for sure. Right. So this is what we need to be really honest with ourselves about. You might want to be sticking to this low body weight or body fat percentage, but are you healthy? Is it actually good? Usually not right? And so sometimes you need to live with more body fat on you and you need to become okay with that in order to live a happy, healthy life where you've got longevity, you've got great hormonal health and you're not starving yourself constantly. So yeah, yeah. that's so true. Um, Coach Julie. Yeah. So I did a reverse as well and I ended up gaining about 30 pounds. Um, and I did start an an unhealthy body weight as well. So I knew I needed to put on weight, but I took mine extremely slow to prevent sort of the body fat gain. Um, so like every week I luckily like work with a coach. So like I would check in with her and we would kind of like monitor based on like progress pictures and kind of like, at one point the scale did really mess with me. So I just completely stopped weighing myself. Cause I was like, there's no way I can continue this reverse if I keep stepping on the scale. Cause the number was just super triggering for me. But then eventually it got to a point like within the reverse where it's like, oh, I can actually see like the progress I'm making. I feel so, like the mindset starts to shift a little bit. And you're like, I, I look like curvier. I have like muscle on my body. Um, I can go out and eat with friends. Like I have a life now. And you start to look at all of these beautiful, positive things. And you're like, how can I ever go back to like mm. that again almost? <laughs> so for me, it was a lot of just like mentally being okay with like 
gaining some weight and then just like realizing there's a life outside of fitness that I can also focus on. Bang on. Isn't it amazing how your mind starts to shift a little bit? It's almost like when you actually start to eat food, you start thinking like a normal human. When you're depriving yourself so much, it messes with your head. And you're so right. I remember thinking like, hell no, I will never, ever go back to living that kind of a life. I actually feel so much more comfortable with more body fat on me now because I've got more balance in my life and life's more enjoyable than my life just being like obsessed with trying to eat as less as possible and exercise as much as I possibly can. That's so awesome. Coach Vanessa, you're nodding over there. You kind of find <laughs> that was your um, story as well. Yes, for sure. And being Kat's coach during her reverse, she freaking crushed it. I just wanted to say that before, before we started. Yes. Yes. Respect, but she freaking crushed it. She looked phenomenal. Um, and I know she won't tell say that on here. So I'm going to be the one to cast her up. Um, but with that going into reverse, so I went through two reverses. So I'll actually speak on my most recent one that I'm going through now because it's actually a little different. So during my HA reverse, yeah, I gained almost 30 pounds. And then I went through a fat loss phase, lost about 15. And now I'm reversing up out of that. And my weight's staying pretty much the same. Um, and like we were just talking about, I have so much more flexibility in my life now when I'm reversing, my calories are higher. I'm switching over to intuitive eating. So I wanted to give this perspective because not every reverse looks the same. And when you do things the proper way and you're able to, you know, gain a little bit more weight than you maybe want to, you can usually lose it. And like in my situation, I was able to lose some of the excess body fat I was carrying around and now being in reverse where I'm really happy with where I'm at and I can reverse my intake back up and have flexibility and maintain this body composition because it's a little bit slower than my last reverse, because I am not dealing with the hormonal imbalance that I once was. So I just wanted to give a different perspective in terms of reverse, because I think sometimes we'll see within clients that we work with that this is kind of what we see sometimes where their weight maintains, but your body composition is changing. And that's kind of happening to me now I'm gaining more muscle and all that stuff. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a different um, perspective there. Love that. It's a really good point. And I think that's where we touched on like what can happen through a reverse diet. A lot of it is very dependent on what you were doing prior. So were you under eating for a really long period of time? And clearly you weren't, Vanessa. You've been really fueling your body. Your focus has been muscle growth. So you've been eating a good amount of food, right? So now the body, you go into a, a deficit, you lose the fat and your body's going to respond really different to when you were under consuming for a really long period of time, maybe with a really low body fat percentage or low body weight. And then you had to gain some weight, right? This is where if you do things the right way, it pays off. Um, and life's actually much easier. I want to finish with one last question. And I want this to be something that each and every one of us um, sort of give our opinion on. And it is, what are the most common mistakes that you see clients make? Um, and I thought if we just finish with one point that you think kind of sets clients up for failure um, and what piece of advice you would give for them not to make that mistake. Um, I know I've just sprung that on you. Maybe I'll start with mine and then I'll, I'll hand over to you guys. So the most common mistake, oh, man, it's so hard just to choose one because there are lots of mistakes. Truly, I really believe, and this might be really annoying, but this is what I have learned in my life, in my 31 years of life and making so many silly mistakes, decisions that I have made around my fitness and nutrition, when I have come at it from a place of self-hatred and trying to hate my body to a place where I will like my body, meaning all of my decisions around nutrition, my training is because I don't like the way that I look has always failed, <laughs> has always gotten me into trouble and has actually never, ever, 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 ever worked. What has been the biggest game changer for me is learning to be my best friend, be my own best friend, because the decisions that I make for myself now around fitness and nutrition come from a place of respect and actually trying to look after myself. Once again, I know this is a really annoying answer, but if you, if you make decisions with your fitness and nutrition from a place of wanting to, to better yourself and it not to be the skinniest or like to yeah. look the leanest, that is when you get results. 
it's when you get results. And the hard bit about that is it, you need to do the hard work. You need to do the inner work and actually start to like yourself and start to learn to reframe the way that you view your body and the way that you, that you think about yourself, your internal dialogue. Once that changes, the rest is easy. It is so easy. So that would be my piece of my piece of advice moving forward is you, you need to work on that. You need to sometimes take a few steps back in order to take a few steps forward. Trying to change your body because you hate it is not going to work. So well said. Yeah. So Coach Kat, what's your piece of advice? Or what's the one thing, sorry, what was the question? The one thing that uh, is most the most common mistakes that clients make? Um, overthinking. Um, just, you know, especially when you're a client and you've hired a coach, you need to trust your coach. And the reason why overthinking can really get in the way is that, you know, I've had clients like this before who have like, you know, I'm looking at my energy as calories that I've burned and the ones that I'm workouts you have for me are not the same calorie burn as the workouts I planned for myself. Or are you really sure that I should be increasing my calories? And it's just kind of like, it's this tug of war And it's not even like out of any sort of anger, out of any bad feelings. It's just, I think when you for so long have had this goal and you've, you know, listened to diet culture and you've trained your brain to think a certain way that this is how I get the result that I'm wanting. It is, it it is hard to go ahead and switch over to almost an exact opposite approach. And I think, um, letting go of that control and when you found a coach that you that you can trust and really trusting that coach is going to help the process be a lot less rocky a ton less stressful which plays a huge role into just how your body responds just your stress levels and i think that it's just going to like really kind of take you into a better experience overall so i would say letting go of the control and really trusting your coach um control an over over extension of control in your life can really kind of um, snag up your progress. Couldn't agree more. You don't know it all. And that's why you need to work with someone who can help you through that. And you need to trust them. Yeah. Bang on coach Vanessa. So I'm going to go with the all or nothing mentality in terms of fitness goals. And, you know, sometimes I'll read check-ins or get feedback from clients. And it's like, Hey, I, you know, couldn't hit my macros. Like, you know, it's all over for me. I, I can't do this. I'm not made for it. If it's not hundred percent, it's absolutely zero. And I was telling a client earlier today, which is why I brought this up because I can make anybody do anything for 12, 16 weeks, eight weeks, whatever, four weeks, you know, I just like give them a plan, whatever the reason that, you know, what we do, what we do and why we're different is because I want to teach my clients how to live this lifestyle for the rest of their life. You're going to go out to eat for the rest of your life. You're going to have drinks for the rest of your life. If you do that, if you partake in that, you're going to miss workouts. You're going to do all these things, right? I want to teach you how to navigate these things rather than when it's the end of the day and it's a zero or 100%, maybe it's an 80, but that's still a win. And those small changes add up over time and watching clients and talking to them. It's like, it's not all or nothing. And that's not the point of a fitness journey. If your fitness journey is all or nothing, it has an expiration date. And I firmly, firmly believe that. Bang on. And then coach Julie to finish off. I was going to say the exact same thing almost is expecting to be perfect and handling everything perfectly and trying to overwhelm yourself. Cause they're like, I need to do my nutrition. I need to get in my exercise. I need to do steps, water, sleep, recovery, all this stuff. I'm like, Let's just focus on like two or three things this week, really nail that with consistency, build these like small habits that we're trying to, you know, in, implement into our lives. And that's where the changes will happen. We don't need to be a hundred percent perfect. Like vacations come up, clients have gotten sick recently. It's okay that like not everything is a hundred percent. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Take so the pressure off. For anyone that's been watching this on YouTube, you will have just seen my little one. Like I told him he's not allowed to come in because we're recording and he came in, but I've been busted because I'm in my pajamas and you could see, you can't see the top part of me looks like I'm wearing a jumper, but second half, bottom half is pajama pants. And you would have just seen that. So my apologies, but there you go. I've been busted. Oh, all right. All right, guys, that was a great episode. I loved that. I reckon that was an awesome way to finish off as well. If you did enjoy this podcast episode, please take a screenshot of it, share it onto your stories, tag Coach Vanessa, Coach Kat, 
Coach Julie, myself, um, send us a DM. We always love to hear your feedback. But that is it from us. Thank you very much.